You are listening to the Across the Campus Podcast, presented by ATBSports.net. All right, everybody, welcome back to Across the Campus, your college sports podcast, as well as the Mid-American and Big Ten Conference podcast. I'm your host, Alex the Captain. As always, joining me today, AJ the Guru. What's going on, everybody? All right, AJ, welcome back to another fantastic week talking Big Ten shooty yeah. hoops. Feels like Mac it's been a while since we've been on. It really does. I uh, I was thinking about that earlier today. I'm like, I feel like it's been like two or three weeks, but we recorded last week. And we did. I, uh, lots, lots has happened in the sports world since we last spoke, so I think that's it's, why the distance has felt so great. Yeah, it, it's weird because it feels like there's been a lot. It's like there's been a lot, but there hasn't. Right. You know, it's just a lot of news that's really like irrelevant. But it's mm-hmm. still it's happened. So, yeah, it's still news, yeah. which is uh, which is always good. Yeah. Um. I mean, we can dive right in really quick. Yeah. Uh, just talking about some Antonio Brown stuff really quick. Did you see he finally turned himself in? Yeah, I saw that. I was in the in the gym earlier and saw uh, the whole video and stuff like that on uh, on ESPN. There, they had him coming out of the courthouse. You know, I don't know if you saw that. He was like in his blue suit, mm-hmm. of the sky like a sky blue suit, and then he had his GPS on his ankle. And yeah, stuff that like was that. pretty wild. The I... whole thing just kind of just confuses me, because he obviously, I mean, ever since he's been in the NFL, he's loved the attention, loves getting the attention. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this has a part to do with it, because nobody comes out of getting a ankle bracelet and in a powder blue suit. Like, no, absolutely. People not. don't do that. No, and sure, it's good for the headlines. Honestly, it's as a as a fan of sports in general. I'm pretty sad to see his fall from grace. Mm-hmm. He he I mean he dominated the 2010s as a wide receiver. Like he was arguably the best receiver of the 2010 decade. And then now we're sitting here looking at him like what what has happened? What mm-hmm. could have happened? Yeah. And you know, I really do hate seeing it because he was such a special talent. But I Mac, Mac guy too. Yep, Mac guy. He he had a lot of a lot of people really not for him coming out of Central Michigan, but he really proved the doubters wrong. And, and I, want to, I want to do a little more research into this sometime, but I feel like his college path is very similar to Kareem Hunt. They both, you know, because Kareem, obviously, with his talent, he could have played at any big-time school. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Antonio Brown. But the reason Kareem Hunt ended up at Toledo was because he had issues in high school, disciplinary issues, and nobody wanted to deal with that, so he ended up at Toledo and dominating the MAC. So I, I, haven't, I haven't done much research into it. I don't know if you have or not, but if it's the same similar story to AB. Yeah, I see, I haven't done much research. Now, I, I obviously, going to Toledo and whatnot, I followed Kareem's story a little mm-hmm. bit closer than I would have in Antonio Brown sure. or anybody else. But I feel like Kareem, so a good friend of mine uh, named Graham, who you'll probably meet at some point, he actually was the guy who, we need to talk about this as well, won our college football bowl pick'em challenge okay. so um we'll we'll cover that in a minute but he and i've talked about it coming out of high school kareem was only like a three-star recruit um and every year he was at toledo he worked on a different fundamental so his rook or his freshman year he came in he worked on his you know up the gut running his second year he worked on his out route running uh his third year worked on his pass catching uh, and blocking and then his fourth year he just found a way to work it all together which is why he looks so good in his last bowl game i think his last bowl game he had five rushing touchdowns mm-hmm. um which tied barry sanders for the college record which i thought was really really cool i think it was against um arkansas state is what it was in mm. mobile for and i forget which i think it was the go daddy bowl i could be wrong on that but kareem was not highly recruited as a three star, everybody said he was too slow, couldn't, didn't have great hands, um, would never be an NFL talent, and his, that's all he heard his entire career at Toledo. You're not good enough. You're not, and so he took that to heart and really focused. And everything they said he couldn't do, he'd used an entire season to perfect. Mm-hmm. So I always really admired that with him and his play style. Looking at what he's done as a player to try to improve himself. 
And then now, of course, now he's in trouble with the law. Don't know if you saw he got pulled over for speeding. Speeding, yeah. And then they found a bag of weed in his car. No, it wasn't a bag of weed. It was just like little grounded up pieces that were in the okay. back seat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I now, thought I'd read a if, bag if it, of weed. Now, if it was a bag of weed, it would, he would have uh, probably gotten written up for it. So, but he, <sighs> he, he, all he did was get a uh, speeding citation. So, all right, I pulled up Antonio Brown here, his recruiting profile. His top three schools of interest were Clemson, Illinois, Michigan State. Okay. But none of them offered him anything. Central was the only one to offer him something. That, that's according to Rivals.com. Interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. Quite the college and, career for him. <laughs> and, tw- and 24-7 sports, too. Same thing as... I'm looking like right here is recruiting profile class of twenty or two thousand six. College list one offer Central Michigan. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And they don't even have a picture of him. It's just his name and like a, an a generic blank yeah. grayscale thing. That's yeah. hilarious. Out of out of Miami, yeah. Hmm. Class of 06. And now look at him. Yeah. Well, now look at what he was. I should yeah. say rather. I, you know, and everybody's out there making jokes on the internet about, you know, this, that, and the other. And at the beginning of the season, I was with that crowd of, all right, you're making yourself look like a clown, but he very clearly needs some real mental help. And I hope that whatever happens, he gets it mm-hmm. for his own sake, you know, like he'll probably not play in the NFL ever again. And that's no. fine. But I really hope that if it's CTE, whatever it is, I hope that he really gets the help he needs and that he recognizes that he needs that help. You know? He'd look great in the XFL, though. I think he would look fantastic if he, if, Mc... if he can get things right, you know? Vince McMahon would love that. Oh, my goodness. He's the promotion goodness. business. He's a promoter. He'd love a character. He Oh, yeah. It would it would absolutely draw money to the XFL, mm-hmm. which that's going to be a fun league to keep an eye that on. That starts, what, next week? Or the week uh, after the Super Bowl? I think it's the week after the Super Bowl. Yeah, so two weeks, three weeks? So, yeah, that'll be... Yeah. That'll be really exciting to watch. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited about that. Um, I am going to hop on over here to college football really quick since we're already talking about two mm-hmm. former Mac guys. Um, the East-West game, the American National game, and the we have a North-South game coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the, Shri- if... the Shriners game was last week. Yeah. I was going to say, did you watch any of these? Uh, I saw highlights. Okay. I did not catch I much OU, of it. OU quarterback played a lot. Yes, yes, he did. Nathan Rourke. Rourke, he, yeah. Yeah, he he got some good touches. I didn't see much of it. I just, you know, I followed the Mac a little bit more. But I'm excited to see this, the the one that's coming up this week. The, yeah, um, well, they got the Reese's Senior Bowl. Yeah. And then the East-West. Uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah, there's a kid from Fort Wayne, Alex Mack, who, uh, or, for our listeners who know, I live in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yeah. And uh, Alex Mack went to Ohio State as a Fort Wayne kid. And so he's in the uh, Reese's uh, Senior Bowl. And so it's been kind of fun watching him in the local news, especially talking about it and oh, things absolutely. like that. And it was actually really cool, too. He signed with uh, Gary V, his sports agency. Uh, you know who Gary V is, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has a sports agency called Bayer Media. And so he, he signed with his sports agency a couple, months, or a couple weeks ago, rather. That's and, uh, that's wild. Okay, right, right. But yeah, it's gonna be kind of fun watching those. And you know, a lot of these guys too. It's kind of cool seeing Jalen Hurts rock an Oklahoma helmet, and then he put his number one on the side representing Alabama. I really like that. I thought that yeah. was super cool that they're just calling it his college helmet. Yeah, I thought that was super cool and a good tribute to both schools because he really made a big difference for for both sure, programs. Sure, sure. He, uh, of course, that's gonna be a helmet to be in the mantle for a long time. Yeah, no, I think I think that that's that's a he's a special talent. Um, I'm really excited to see Jordan Love from Utah State yeah. in this Senior Bowl game. I think he is an underrated, you know, Mountain West kid. I think he's got a lot of skills available to him, and I think that he's going to be a really great quarterback, not only for this game, but I think he's got an NFL career ahead of him as well. So I'm excited to see what he can do in this game to really kind of ball out against the upper conferences, if you will. Sure. Yeah, I mean, this is a great opportunity for a lot of those younger guys. Maybe not younger, but guys from smaller schools to get that exposure because mm-hmm. some of them may not get a combine invite, and right. so this is kind of like their combine. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. 
I think it's it'll be really really fun to see what happens. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's hop on over to some college basketball, or as uh, as our beard brother AJ really likes that I call it shooty hoops. Um, let's uh, jump on over to that scoreboard really quick. Right now we've got Marquette and Butler are playing tonight. That's going to be a really good game, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, that's and that's kind of the highlight of the games this evening. Yeah, but, not a whole lot going on. Yeah, but Indiana knocking off Michigan State last night. Saw that. 67-63. Yeah. Once again, the tale of the Big Ten home team taking down the visitor. That's been rare. It's been very rare. They've had two or three this year for that. Yeah, that uh, Michigan State went, you know, they're now 6-2 and two in the Big Ten. Indiana making a case to be one of the better teams in the Big Ten. Yeah. Minnesota, I don't know what ha- what's been happening to Ohio State after the beginning of the season. Yeah. Now 2-6 and six in the Big Ten, 12-7 and seven overall. Yeah, struggling. And, of course, Minnesota hit a last-second three-pointer to, to win that the other night. Yeah, Marcus uh, Carr drilled Carr, that yeah, shot. 3.3 seconds to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean it's a tale of Big Ten basketball right now. They're just kind of, as they do traditionally, just beat the hell out of each other yep. uh, all year long, and people kind of limp into the tournament. Uh, and, and then they rock in the tournament. And yeah, that's what do. I don't get. The Big Ten is always so good when it comes to mm-hmm. tournament play. Yeah, and they got Ball State and Central Michigan tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ball State's eleven and seven, Central ten and eight. That'll be a good one. Mm-hmm. That's, that's gonna up, be a good one. Yeah, it's a, up at Central. Uh, Let's take a look here. I looked at the max standings in basketball. We've got another one on the women's side. Mm-hmm. I'm actually excited for this one. Central Michigan's taking on Toledo tonight, I believe. Mm. And they're 1-2 and two in the w- women's MAC, respectively. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be a good one. Yeah, Ball State's leading the uh, MAC West, 4-1 four four and one in the conference. Uh, Toledo's 3-3. Three and three, And Eastern Michigan, they're in last 0-6 in the, in the conference. Okay, okay. Um, I am looking at the rest of the big t- – oh, um, big one in the MAC tomorrow. You were talking about Ball State Central Michigan. Mm-hmm. Another kind of tilt, big important tilt, Battle of I-75, Bowling Green taking on Toledo. Oh, nice, yeah. That that one is at UT. That's yep. tomorrow night at 7 on ESPN3. Yep. And then Ball State plays Bowling Green on Tuesday. Yep. So those will be some really good games. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for this Toledo-BG game, one, because it's a big rivalry game, but two – Toledo has been so confusing to watch play this year. Yeah. They've knocked off OU and Kent St- – or was it Akron? Yeah, I think it was – Akron, yeah. Akron. And I just – but then they lose games that they they have no business losing. Right. Um. You know, they beat OU earlier this well, week, 83-74. I think, I think that's a tale of all of college basketball this year. It really is. It really is. Like, I'm looking at how Toledo has done on the season – Toledo lost at Valpo by two, yep. at Notre Dame by two, and then they go and they lose at Wright State by seven. They lose to Ball State by four, lost to Kent State by seven. All of their games are relatively close. It's just Toledo hasn't found a way to finish yeah, to in finish, some of these yeah, games. To close out, yeah. Yeah. And you, know, you brought up Valpo there. They're never a slouch when it comes to basketball. No. Well, their coach, Drew Bryce, or Bryce Drew, he left a couple years ago. Yep. And he took over Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's still there anymore or not, but uh, his family is a legendary at Valpo. His dad, Homer, was a coach there. And then Bryce hit a last-second shot to beat Duke or Kentucky back in, like, the early 90s in the NCAA tournament. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, he was a Valpo kid as well. But, yeah, his dad is, like, one of the all-time winningest coaches. What are they? Are they the Summit League? Or they're not summer. They're uh, uh, Valpo is in the. Let's take a quick look. Is that Ohio Valley? It might be Ohio Valley. Um, no, Missouri Valley. Missouri Valley. Yeah, uh, but I don't think they were in that conference back then. No, uh, Valpo is currently ten and ten on the season right now. Yeah, they are not as strong as they have been, but yeah, ten and ten on the season, so a five hundred record. But they've got a really solid offense. Yeah, and they're always a team that shoots in the tournament as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. They uh, they take on Evansville on the twenty sixth, so on Sunday. Mm. They take on yeah Evansville, and then at Bradley three days later. Mm, okay. So Valpo is a good good squad. I'm looking at Ball State right now. I. <laughs> I really like this Ball State team. I think that they they got off to a good start in the conference, 
and then just haven't let go. I mean, they, they really struggled to begin the year, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of back and forth win loss kind of thing, but then they got to conference play and they've only dropped one game to Akron. Yeah. And they look really good right now. They're playing some top quality basketball yeah. um, in the, in the mid American conference. Yeah. So Bryce drew is no longer coaching of uh, Vanderbilt last year. was his last year. Okay. He was only there three seasons. Interesting. Interesting. I'm not okay. sure what. Because he played in the NBA for a while. Gotcha. Well, okay. I guess eight years. He was drafted by the Houston Rockets in the first round of 16th overall pick. I played for Houston, Chicago, Charlotte, New Orleans. And then it looks like he went overseas. And then overseas again. And then he went to Val- after he stopped playing in 05, went to Vanderbilt as a coach. Or, excuse me. Went to Valpo as a coach, an assistant, then an assistant. Okay. They became the head coach in 2011 through 2016. Mm. And went from Valpo to Vanderbilt. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm. We posted a poll on our Twitter the other day about who people thought would win the Mid-American Conference. Mm-hmm. Well, time out, time out. Remember we were talking about the conference they used to be in? That's Her- yes. The Horizon League. That's right. Oh, my gosh. I haven't heard that league name in quite a while. <laughs> yep, that was the Horizon League. That's wow. it. Uh, I wonder if that's still a thing anymore. Yeah, it is. Huh. Interesting. Man, the good old Horizon League. Right? Yeah, it it encompasses uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky. Hmm. School members are Cleveland State, Detroit Mercy, Wisconsin Green Bay, uh, IUPUI, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, Northern Kentucky, Oakland University, University of Illinois at Chicago, Wright State, Youngstown University, or Youngstown State. Interesting. Huh. The more you know. Exactly. Learning something new every day. Right. Absolutely. I, uh, I'm i looking at Buffalo, too. Mm-hmm. Remember how dominant Buffalo was for just a couple years? Yeah. And then now they're in third place in the Mac East. Now, granted, they're only a game and a half behind Akron and Bowling Green, who sit atop of the Mac East. But my, how the mighty have fallen. Right. It's like every two or three years, there's somebody new. Mm-hmm. And then they out. run it for two or three years. And exactly. Then and they go They away. disappear. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't seen too many other major upsets in college basketball so far this mm-hmm. week. I know we talked about a couple last week, which were pretty wild. Mm-hmm. But other than Michigan State getting knocked off, I haven't really seen any big upsets this week. No, it's a pretty quiet week, honestly. Mm-hmm. Dayton looked really good against St. Bonaventure. Yeah, um, and then I want you to answer me this, too. How did Memphis only score 40 points? I, good question. Yeah, that was another kind of big upset, I guess. Mm-hmm. Tulsa looked solid in that yeah, game. Yeah, 40 points, and they were ranked. Top performers, you ready? DJ Jeffries from Memphis. Eight points, three rebounds, three assists. He was their top performer. Yikes. That's not good. I mean, they're three and two in the American. They're fourteen and four on the season. Obviously, sitting at twenty, they won't be sitting at twenty anymore. Mm-hmm. They got doubled up by Tulsa, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't have an answer. How 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 do you only score forty points? Like, I know. did you play your well? They, what did they freshman? score in the first half? Uh, let's take a quick peek. In the first half, let's go to the game cast. Had it been like fifteen. At halftime, Tulsa led forty to seventeen. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I'm gonna look this up now because I. Well, I didn't have my phone on me, but I want to look up like the shooting percentages and stuff like that because it cannot be good. Uh, field goal percentages. I've got it all right here in front okay, of me. Okay, cool. Memphis, twenty eight point six percent. Three points, nine point five percent. Turnovers. They had twenty turnovers. And they had 35 rebounds. Tulsa shot 50% field goal, 33% from the three, 11 turnovers. I mean, they protected the ball. That's what they did. Yeah. And then rebounds, they got they nabbed 37 of them. Wow. 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 Oh, another thing we do have to talk about. Kansas, Kansas State. Yeah, the brawl. That is the big one we need to discuss. That was wild. That Kent, Kansas State had absolutely no business stealing the ball with four seconds to go no. and, and, and laying it up like that or dunking whatever he did. No, there was no reason not. for that. You're already going to lose. Mm-hmm. Like, don't do that. It's kind of like one of like the unwritten rule type thing. Like well, in baseball, absolutely. there's a million unwritten rules. 
that's kind of an underwritten rule in basketball as well. Well, and that was, you know, who who got into the fight? D'Souza? Yeah, D'Souza. Yeah, he, well, he picked up a stool. Yeah. And if, then, he doesn't, if he doesn't pick up a stool, he's still playing. Yeah. Well, he, I think he ended up getting a 12-game suspension. So essentially like the rest of the year. Yeah, for at least the rest of the regular season and then probably conference tournament play. Yeah. If I'm him, I just say, screw it, and I go to the league. Just yeah. declare. Just, all right, I'm done. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Silvio D'Souza. Um, he was stripped by Jawan Gordon near midcourt. Gordon tried to do a layup. Souza recovered to block and then stood over Gordon and then just, like, yelled at him. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, haha, I, I blocked yeah. you. Like, come on. Like, why? It's not and necessary. I saw a great meme earlier. It said, if that happens, you, just, you should sit on the bench and stay out of trouble because you'll be replacing those guys. Right. <laughs> you really will. And, well, I mean, that's, you know, Kansas is one of those programs. This win was obvious. You know, they're number three in the country, 15-3 and three on the season. One, you were going to dominate Kansas State. It, mm-hmm. Sure, it's a rivalry game, whatever. I get it. But there's no reason for this ugliness. This was just like the Pittsburgh Browns game. Good win marred by some ugliness at the end of the mm-hmm. game. You know, because nobody's talking about the win. They're all talking about the fight. And you, you just... You gotta be careful with that. Yeah, you can't. You can't do that. Um, yeah, at, it was one of those things where I, I I don't know. It was, you know, I didn't see it till the following morning, and I go, I didn't know if it was like a replay of a something from the past or whatnot. I looked at it a little bit more, and then, you know, there's people in the band who were involved in the middle of it. There's fans. Like, it was just kind of a brawl for all, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that was again. Good win, good solid win for the program, marred by an ugly loss. Yeah, you can't you can't do that. You just really can't. That's been kind of the theme of things this year as well. Mm-hmm. Good win, are you know taken over or overshadowed by that mm-hmm. some ugliness. Yeah, well, you know the Browns one obviously being the big one this year, but you know this and, like it's just well, it's Odell not Beckham a good in the locker room after LSU. Yeah, and... yeah. Just it's just all kinds of ridiculousness. Right. Um, also, I did want to point out Rutgers. They are ranked for the first time in forty years. It's wild. Forty years, and then the first game that they were as a ranked team, they lost. Right. So, <laughs> and you know, speaking of Rutgers as well, on the other side of football, they're getting some some tr- good solid transfers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean Wade from Ohio State. He's going there. Because he, he was the MVP of the Rose Bowl last year, and he didn't play a lot this year in the new system and, and whatnot. But now that he played under Shiano on defense, and Shiano's the head coach or the head coach of Rutgers now, uh, he fits well in his system. But the kid who rec- or the coach who recruited Sean Wade to Ohio State, Kerry Combs, he left Ohio State for Tennessee with Mike Vrabel, a, with the Titans, and then he just came back last week and took over as a DC for Ohio okay. State. Okay. So Sean Wade's dad is like, you've got to be shitting me. He's on Twitter. Yeah. He's like, this is unreal. Because his son play, or his son was recruited by this guy, and now he's transferred. He's gone. And now his coach is back, and he's like, well, you know, what's up with that? Yeah. And then I don't know if you saw either, uh, going on another tangent here, but the uh, Houston quarterback is transferring to Miami, and uh, that court, there's because Miami had two quarterbacks transfer in last year. Miami, Martel, Florida, right? Yeah, Miami, Florida. Yep. Okay. They had Tate Martell and another kid. Mm-hmm. Well, the kid who ended up starting this past year is now transferring out again. So he transferred in first season. Now he's transferring out because this King kid from Houston is coming in, and he's solid. Yeah, that Jaron Williams is uh, Miami quarterback. Jaron Williams is reportedly reportedly entering the transfer protocol. And he was a starter last year. Interesting. That's so, wild. Okay, it's, it's really becoming just a free agency market at this point. Well, and I think that's the that's that was the fear with the transfer portal thing, right? Is now it's become so much more lax than mm-hmm. what it used to be. Now it's a, uh, hey, you're graduating, or hey, you don't want to play for this school because you're buried on the depth chart, or hey, you want a new challenge? Cool, just transfer. It's fine. Yeah. Like, well, then, like too, you have guys like, for example, Jonah Jackson who transferred from Rutgers to Ohio State, mm-hmm. and he was a starter on the offensive line this year, he's at the Senior Bowl, and he's like the top guard there right now. Yeah. He never would have gotten that at Rutgers. No, absolutely Which, not. And now he transfers to Ohio State. I think it was a grad transfer. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he was only a yeah. year. 
And so he does that, and he becomes the, one of the top guards, and he could probably start in the NFL next year. Well, and I, think, a, and I think that's one of the things that concerns me. You know, back when college football was a lot younger, back in the 60s and 70s, it was one of those things where you couldn't, I mean, you you could transfer and you could make things work, but there wasn't this whole graduate transfer thing. Like, that that was so unheard of until just a couple of years ago. And I think it should just stick to grad transfers. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with that. Like, because you're opening up so many opportunities now to become a free agent market. And so I think it honestly should just be grad transfer because that makes sense. You do four years at one school, and not all school. If you want to do a graduate program, that's fine. But not all schools have that graduate program. That's right. fine. But if you want to say that school, great, no problem. But you also have like scholarships and you also have a story for a different day. But yeah, I think you should just stick to grad transfers only because it levels the playing field. Yeah, I think it levels the playing field. But I think you know you you get guys who are just out there and they're transferring and they're doing all this stuff. I think you, you mentioned it just a second ago. It becomes essentially a giant free agency pool, and I think that's setting a dangerous precedent for college sure. football. So I think you know the NCAA needs to maybe look at it a little bit, but I think the NCAA is dealing with a lot of other stuff now that this is probably not the focus of right what they're dealing with. Yeah, they've yeah they've got their hands in too many cookie jars right now. <laughs> they really do. Didn't know there were that many cookie jars available. <laughs> Yeah. I did want to talk about Baylor really quick. Um, yeah, they're number one in the country right now. Yeah, that's wild. Sixteen and one, six and zero oh in the Big Twelve, and they've knocked off one, two, three, four, five. They've knocked off five ranked opponents. Most recently, number three Kansas at Kansas by double digits. Yeah. Like that's that's wild. Yeah, you know and they. You know, a couple years ago, when you talked about number one Baylor, it was their women's team. Yeah, and they're still a solid program. They're still mm-hmm. killing it. But Brandon I'm just Griner. Oh man, that that team was so good. They didn't lose a game, did they? I don't think they did. That was what three years ago, something like oh. that. Four years ago. I feel like, yeah, at least four. Yeah, no, they they were really really good. Um, and I just for me it's just one of those things. I watch it and I'm like, how? Oh, mm-hmm. uh, speaking of women basketball, Purdue Fort Wayne mm-hmm. is getting absolutely rocked by South Dakota 58 to 13 right now in nice. the third quarter. Yeah. So Purdue scored 10 points the in Jack the first Rabbits. half. <laughs> the the Jackrabbits versus the Mastodons. Yep. Yeah, they uh they scored 10 points in the first two quarters. Oh boy. Yeah. And South Dakota scored 52 in the first two. That's kind of an odd co- cuz they're in the same conference, the Summit Conference. The Summit, yep. Summit League. Mm-hmm. That's a weird Geographically, that makes no sense. Yeah, you it's just so IPFW, spread apart. Yeah, IBFW can't afford to fly out there. Like, coaches, staff, players. That's a lot of money. It's not a big school either. There's a small campus on the north side of town. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Well, they bus out there? They drive? I don't know how they do. I have to ask. But geographically, it makes no sense. No, it makes zero sense. I mean, the summit, you, you look at the the distance of the summit conference you've got south dakota south dakota state western illinois oral roberts denver yeah omaha and then like so all these guys are more like the great plains kind of teams and then you've got a great lakes team in purdue yep purdue fort wayne like and it, and it used to be ip or yeah ipfw indiana university purdue university fort wayne yep and uh, this year they changed i or purdue must have bought it all out because they have their men's basketball team is is historically good. Mm-hmm. They beat IU two years in a row, once down in Bloomington and once here in Fort Wayne, maybe two years ago. Yeah, they were super solid. I remember that being all over the yeah um, ESPN and everything. That was that was pretty mm-hmm. wild. Yeah, they play their games here at the Coliseum. Okay. Yep. Oh, the good old Fort Wayne Coliseum. I haven't been there in years. I think the last time I was there, I was there for a concert of some kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were there last weekend. And that was that's where the hockey team play the yep. Comets play, right? Yep, the Comets play there, the Mad Ants play there, IPFW plays there. Okay. And then Indiana Tech, I think, plays there too. Okay. Okay, very cool, very cool. Um, I don't know, do we – I think we want to move into maybe some bracketology if you want. Or well, actually, one we, thing too, talking about college football. Go uh, for it. Ed Orgeron signed an extension today. Seven years, right? Yeah, seven years, $40 million, I think. 
That's so much money, so many mm. years, but he earned it. I think yeah. he, you know, they what signed him what mid season last year. I think it was, yeah. And then he delivers a national championship because he was year. an interim coach. Yep, they that weren't even going to hire him full on until the season was over. Yeah, it was less miles, right? Yep, because they fired less miles, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was like a mutual thing. Yeah, he, they they agreed to part ways, mm-hmm. as they as they say. The technical term. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, he took over for Les Miles, and it was it was cool to kind of see the team really come out and fight this mm-hmm. remaining part of that season. And if you look back to on his journey, he's had a wild coaching career. Mm-hmm. One of the more wild ones I can remember. Because I mean, he obviously was an Ole Miss head coach at Ole Miss. Yep. And you know, remember the movie The Blind Side? He was the head coach at Ole Miss during that whole era. Yep. Then he goes to USC, becomes the interim co- or becomes an OC or offensive coordinator out there, becomes an OC. Thought he was gonna get the head job, didn't get the head job. Then he came to LSU as an OC. Then didn't think he was gonna get the job. Then he got the job. And then oh, where else has he been? He's been in a few different places, and he's he's been all over the globe. It seems like. Mm-hmm. But I can't. It's like his voice, his stature, just doesn't fit a Southern California USC program. Yeah, he's absolutely. He's a Louisiana guy through and through. He's born and raised in Louisiana. Born and raised in Louisiana. Went yeah, to went Michigan. To... No, he didn't go to Michigan. Oh no, I'm still thinking Les Miles. Les Sorry. Miles, yeah. Yeah. Um, he went to some like small Louisiana school. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's completely Louisiana through and through. Yeah. He looks like he eats a lot of gumbo. Yeah, he does. <laughs> There was a story I was listening to on a podcast one time. He was talking about Joey Burrow. Okay. And uh, they went to a restaurant, and I can't remember if it was that. It had to be down in New Orleans or somewhere in that area. They went to a restaurant. They, they didn't have any crawdaddies. And so uh, Coach O was talking to Joey about it. He was like, you know, I'm sorry. Without, you know, Joey was like, oh, that's fine. You know, I wanted some. No big deal. Orgeron gets on the phone, calls his crawdaddy guy, and the guy <laughs> brings in a bag full of crawdaddies to the kitchen, and they cook them up and bring them out to the table. <laughs> He would, Coach O would have a crawl daddy guy. He would have a crawl daddy guy, yeah. <laughs> wow, oh. that's that's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I love Coach O. I really do. I really, I wish him all the success down there. Sure. I, you know, I'd be fine if the SEC didn't win a few national championships for a few years, but I really like Coach O. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. Um, he's, a, he's a football guy. Oh, 100%, 100%. Um, I guess let's let's dif- dive in the mailbag real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. We got a couple questions here for us. Um, we can kind of stick to the college football side really quick. Yeah. Of the four teams who made the college football playoffs this year, which of the four has the best chance of returning to the postseason? The best chance. Mm-hmm. I think I'm it's gonna... Clemson and Ohio State personally. I I was going to say Clemson and Ohio State because as the quarterbacks are both back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd give Clemson the advantage though because ATN's coming back as well. Yep. And we have uh, Master T, who was a, he's a heck of a running back, but he's never started. Right. Or well, has he started? No, he hasn't started. So yeah, you know, no, he but, didn't get any starts this year. No, but I mean, he still had almost like a thousand yards as a backup. So yeah, you know, it's not like he's a scrub or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would give those two teams. Uh, but I would give you know, I hate to say it, but I would give Clemson just a slight edge just because. They have both returning running back and quarterback. Yep, I think Clemson, you know, you look at Trevor Lawrence, that guy is, he's jacked after this year. He's like, look, I know what I need to do to go win another national championship. I think he he really does have a lot of potential to have a good NFL career, of course, but I think finish out his college career strong. Sure. I think that he's he's a really good player who – can do a lot of lot of stuff. I think you know right now he's on my All America list for next year. He mm-hmm. like I just think he's that good of a player. He just doesn't have the help that that a um, jo- uh, Justin Fields has or that a Joey Burrow had. You know things like that. So I think he has to do more of it himself. But that shows what kind of player he is. That he's right. not going to give up. And I and I respect that. I really do. I do think Ohio State has a really good shot at returning. They are super good at reloading. Ohio State doesn't drop off, and they haven't in almost two decades. They just reload, and I think that's really cool to see. 
if you're if you're a Buckeye fan, if you're a Big Ten fan in general, you know it sucks having one team dominate the conference. But then there's that challenge to try to beat that team who's always dominating the conference. Right. So I think that's cool to see. Um, yeah, I don't know. I those are my two favorites. If I had to pick a team who I think could make the postseason tournament this year, just based off of nothing, I think Baylor. Yeah. I think Baylor Baylor could take the Big Twelve and they took because one of LSU's Joe or no which LSU coach went over there. Um, oh, what's the passing game coordinator, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up really quick. It is Baylor, Baylor, Baylor. Teams. Uh, nope, I don't want the Mid American Conference. Sorry for all you listeners. We uh we very clearly love the Mid American Conference. There's no there's no secret there. Um. And also, Aranda. kind of coming in unplanned oh. tonight, we, uh, uh, we didn't put a whole lot of planning into this one tonight, did we? I'm sorry? We didn't put a whole lot of planning into this one tonight, did we? No, not really. No, we, uh, well, as you knew, as I was sending you the picture earlier, I'm currently laying on my floor doing this podcast because <laughs> we had the meat sweats. Faith and I went to a local hole-in-the-wall burger place for dinner, who I, I've heard, I've never been there, but I've seen, I follow them on Instagram, I've seen their food truck before, and I go, let's go try this place out. Looks good. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, Dave Ar- Ar- Aranda, the defensive coordinator yeah, from Baylor or coordinator. from LSU. That's right. That's right. The passing coordinator went to uh, Carolina with uh, Rule, I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what it was. So yeah, yeah, we. Uh, that's that's we get, that's who they hired. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, we got meat sweats. Sometimes kind of laying out here. We didn't put any planning into this, so it's all right. It's man. all right. It's uh, I mean, we we kind of know how the show flows anyway, and exactly. anybody who listens know how we how we do sure. it anyway. So, sure. but yeah, I think Baylor's kind of my dark horse. They got Charlie Brewer, uh, Brewster, Brewer. Brewer, Brewer, yeah, Charlie Brewer coming back. You know, um, John Lovett, the running back. I think he's gonna have a solid year. Uh, he had 103 carries last year for 655. I think they're gonna start trusting him more, especially now that they've got uh, Aranda as the defensive. The, the defensive mind for that mm-hmm. Baylor team. That Baylor defense was nasty last year anyway. Yeah. I think that he's got a really, really solid – I mean, they only allowed 19 points a game last year. So I think they've got a lot of potential. Yeah, I think we'll hurt them later on towards the end of the season with injuries. Mm-hmm. Brewer got hurt, and then they just kind of overmatched yep. with Georgia and the Sugar Bowl. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that those are the big things that – he's going to look to try to hopefully fix and protect his guys a little bit. And I'm excited for him. This is his first head coaching gig in college. So mm-hmm. um, that'll be really, really, really cool to see. So I really like Baylor as kind of my dark horse. Yeah, I think year. they'll be really good. And, you know, they've got some stuff that, you know, they've built on. Mm-hmm. You know, because obviously they were nothing a couple of years ago when you really think about it. Right. So, you know, they've. They've built something up, and that's what Matt Rule does. He builds programs. He built Temple. He built Baylor back to prom, you know, national relevance. Mm-hmm. I think his first year they were like they won one or two games, yep. and they go on to win in 10, 12, however many. And so uh, but I think he'll do the same thing in Carolina as well. I hope yeah. so. I really but do. Yeah, the Big 12 will be interesting, though, because if you look at it, I don't know who Oklahoma has coming in at quarterback. I. Uh, you look at Iowa State, Matt Campbell over there, former Matt guy. Love you know, Matt they Campbell. Were, they were down terribly this year. Mm-hmm. They had one big win against. Who was that? Well, they almost knocked off Oklahoma. I remember watching that back in yeah. November. Well, um, they, hit, they hit a last second field goal. I think they beat Texas, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was Texas that they yeah, knocked off. Yeah, it was off. a last second field goal, yeah. And so they're, I mean, they were 7 7, I think, or something like that, 6 7 on the year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they were 6 7, they lost to Notre Dame. Yep, in the bowl game. In the bowl game, yep. yeah. They can't be worth bowl. Uh, so, yeah, you know, it's just going to be interesting to see how, with the magic that Oklahoma has had the past three, couple of years Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts. Mm-hmm. I don't know who they have coming up. You know, they don't have a transfer coming in that I know of. Yeah, nothing As that I've yet. seen. Heck, this, this Miami team can end up going there for all we know. Right. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think there's a lot of what if with Oklahoma this next year. I think the defense will be fine. Defense played really well this year. 
um, until the playoffs. But I think that the defense will be fine. It's just a lot of questions on offense for them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's going to be like you have a lot of teams this year. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good talent in this class. It's not just position specific either. It's kind of across the board. Across the board, they've got a, you know, a lot of good offensive linemen, a lot of good skill guys, just a lot of I really like this offensive players. line class. Oh, man, it's stacked. It's one of the best ones we've seen in the last couple of years. Yeah, I like that kid from Iowa. Oh, that, uh, um, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bad dude. Off the tackle. I'd love to see him in Cleveland. I don't know if he'll be here by the 15th or 14th pick, whatever we have. Mm-hmm. But he's a bad dude. Yeah, no, I think there's, you know, he's he's nasty. And he, he doesn't give up on a play. He'll keep going. Mm-hmm. I, I remember watching an Iowa game earlier this year and just thinking, dude, this line is a stud line and then he was obviously the highlight of that line yeah i was i paid more attention to it in the bowl game this year Mm -hmm. and they were talking about it he was just manhandling people and speaking of offensive linemen and going back to the mat conference i did not realize eric fisher was still in the league yeah out of central michigan city he was number one overall pick yes he was and he's still killing it still in the league you know who i really like didn't he have like a bag of two like maybe one or two bad years Maybe I think his his rookie year was a little rough, but after yeah. that, um, he really Man. hasn't had a bad yeah. season. The one that I'm really kind of keeping my eye on though is Andrew Thomas out of Georgia. Yep, I like him. He's only a junior, and he's gonna. It looks like he, right now he's projected as the number one offensive lineman, but he's he's nasty. Mm-hmm. He's really nasty. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking at Eric Fisher right now. He was that was a 2013 class. Mm-hmm. Man, it yeah. feels like forever ago. Yeah, it feels like it was a hundred years ago. Uh, but I remember watching that happen and everybody yeah. in the MAC freaking out like we got a first overall pick. Like, and yeah. he's lived up to it. You know. Yeah, yeah, he's a big boy. Mm-hmm. He's six seven three zero six. Yep. Yeah, I really like it. I really yeah. like him. He's a solid player for sure. Um. Yeah. But this NFL draft, like you said, is going to be pretty, pretty crazy with a lot of skill player and positional player and then mm-hmm. linemen as well. Like, it's it's a really stacked draft class. It really is, and it'll be fun to pay attention in the next couple of months mm-hmm. uh, when it comes out to uh, mock drafts and, and, and things like that. Because they'll be mock, or, excuse me, mock drafts will be coming out here in the next couple of weeks. Yep. I'm uh, I'm going to be looking at a bunch of those myself. Uh, one for fantasy football purposes, but two just so that we have more stuff to kind of talk about and see where rankings are, make our own kind of thing, whatnot. Yeah, exactly. Um, next mailbag question, though. Let's uh, let's flip the switch over to some college basketball. Which conference looks to be the top conference so far? It's hard to tell because nobody's consistent. Nobody's been consistent. This has been Nobody the year has. of inconsistency. More so, I think, than it has been in other years. Yeah. And, you know, we can either say the teams are consistently bad or they're inconsistent. You know, mm-hmm. you can go both ways. But there's not one team that really, or one conference that I think that really stands out because once you say that, they go down. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of been the trend this year. You don't want to be a top five, top eight ranked team. Absolutely Because not. you're going to go down and just bound to happen. Mm-hmm. So... I'm pulling up, uh, let's see here, pull the top 25. I mean, right now, you look at the ACC, you've got Louisville, Florida State, and Duke all in the mm-hmm. top eight. Yeah. I think that's that's pretty telling. But then you scroll down to the Big 12. They've got Baylor, Kansas in the top five, and then West Virginia at number 14. But you got Dayton still there at 7 and 17 and 2 in the year. Yeah. So, like, Villanova, they've gotten – Bad losses this year, but they're sitting there ranked nine. Illinois, they're ranked at twenty uh, first. Well, I'm looking at the Big Ten right now. There are five ranked teams in the top yeah. twenty five for the Big Ten. And then West Virginia, Huggy Bear over there, they're ranked fourteen mm-hmm. uh, at fifteen and three in the year. Yep. So really, you know, Houston even they're ranked. They're up there now. Michigan State, San Diego State, they're fourth, twenty mm-hmm. and zero. Yeah. Like, it's... and then Oregon, and they're at twelve. So really, nobody's staying consistent. There's no consistency at all. Everybody, every conference has somebody in there somewhere. Now I do really uh, like 
how the Big Ten standings look this year. The the recent powerhouses, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Purdue, all just sitting at the bottom of the yeah. conference, which is wild. I mean, Michigan State, obviously, always consistent in the Big Ten. But you've got Illinois, you've got Iowa, and then you've got Rutgers all in the top you know, five and of the Big Ten conference. Maryland's got to be up there too, right? Maryland is sitting at 17 in the nation at 15 and, and four. And then Iowa went to Maryland to beat them last year, or mm-hmm. last couple weeks ago. Yep. And, and we got like, <laughs> you know, going to the ACC here, Virginia's not ranked, but Florida State is. Yeah. You know, Virginia, defending national champions, they're 12 and six. FSU is sitting here at 16 and two. So, again, no consistency whatsoever. Uh, Purdue, they had a big win the other night. Uh, no, excuse me, they ended up losing that, never mind, to Maryland. Yep. Uh, I, was, I was watching a little bit of that game. But then they go, Purdue goes down and beats Wisconsin, who's historically a pretty solid Big Ten program. Yeah. You know, they beat them by 19 points. Yeah, they, they stomped them. So, really, to answer that question, they're really, it's hard to say, just a simple fact, there is no consistency at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a question that'll be really, really well answered, like the first round of the tournament. Right after conference tournaments are done, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of when the tell, the tall tale will come out, and we'll be able to answer a little bit, a little bit better. Because again, there's just no consistency. It's I, so bad. Every time I turn on ESPN on the, in the mornings, some top team went down. Yeah. It's, oh, it's well, a, and I think for, I think for me that's that's the big part of it. Right? Is a lot of the top teams, like you mentioned, keep falling. You know, it mm-hmm. just seems like every every single day. Oh, and another top ten team falls. Whatever. But I think if 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 I had to throw a dart at a board i'd be aiming for the acc and the big 10 just for ranking consistency yeah i think those are based off of ranking consistency those are the best two conferences i feel like the the acc has a better top tier talent but i feel like the big 10 is a little bit more even across you know top to bottom right right but i mean you look at the acc right now a team that i did not think would be this terrible North Carolina. Yeah, they're struggling. Eight and ten right now. One and six in conference play. Yeah, they uh Wow. They just lost to who was it the other night? Well, they're on a five game losing streak right now. Yeah, five games, yeah. They just lost to Virginia Tech by two. Virginia Tech. That's what it was. Yep. yep. So I yeah. I have no idea. And obviously San Diego State, they're sitting here at twenty and oh. I haven't I haven't heard of San Diego State in years. No. So absolutely not. Yeah, all, the only thing I know now about him is that what's his face, Brady Hoke's back there coaching football. That's literally all I know. Yeah, <laughs> and they play at Qualcomm Stadium. Like, yeah, I mean, hey, you know, good for Brady Hoke getting back into that gig, sure. right? Going back to his roots. Going back to his roots, indeed. Well, didn't yeah, he started at San Diego State and then Ball State, right? Yep. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. I guess we could kind of talk about this following college basketball which team looks to be underrated so far i think i would say dayton but they're ranked in the excuse me they're ranked in the top 10 yeah i think the one that kind of surprised me is florida state okay i think you know they're sitting up here ranked oh i just had it where did i put that at you just see ranked at five at 16 and two Mm -hmm. the acc a known basketball conference let me see here. Let me pull up their conference here. Louisville's at the top of the conference. They're seven and one, mm-hmm. followed by Florida State, six and one. Duke's in there, six and two, and then Virginia Tech, North Carolina State, Syracuse, Pitt, UAB, Clemson, BC, GT, and UNC sits down at the bottom at one and six. Yeah, five and a half games out of first place. So wild. So, yeah. So really, I think you know, I would have to say Florida State. I mean. That's a team that's been consistent, you know, the past two, three years. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to ter- tournament time, eh, who knows? Yeah, they're, they're a wild card. Absolutely. But yeah, I'm going to say Florida State right here because, let's see, they try to look at their losses here. They even beat Louisville this year mm-hmm. uh, by 12 points just a few weeks ago at the beginning of the month. But the first you know, beginning of the year, they lost to Pitt, 63-61. Mm-hmm. Uh, they beat Florida... Let's see here. They beat Florida, or excuse me, they beat Purdue in overtime. Yeah, I, I vaguely remember that one. And then they lost to Indiana, eighty to sixty-four, mm. and that's their only two losses. Huh. So, but 
But, but they haven't really blown anybody out, really. I mean, they, most of their games are within 10, 15 points. Sure. Uh, here's a 12, 12, 13. Uh, yeah, so really, yeah. I, I don't know how these guys go on national sports radio shows and talk about college basketball because it's just confusing. Yeah, there's so much going on. Yeah. Because, because it's not like college football where there's 131 teams. Right. In one division. No, now we're getting all the one double A teams as well. And so there's like three hundred teams in college basketball that are yeah. fighting for sixty eight tournament spots. Yeah. Which is just insane to think about. Now I will I do want to talk about UMBC, the tournament darlings from a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> sitting at eight and twelve in the American East Conference. I don't yeah, think they're going back to the tournament this year. Probably not. <laughs> no. And I I can't remember too. I have to look it up, but like VCU, I remember like when Shaka Smart was there and okay. like, you know, running that program very well. He goes to Texas. He hasn't really done, I think he's still at Texas anyway. Uh, Maybe. He hasn't done a whole lot there. He might still be there, yeah. Um, yeah, I. it's college basketball. It. You know, I we always joke in during bowl season. Oh, which reminds me, I did I do need to talk about that. But we always joke during bowl season that you never know what's going to happen. No, that's how it is for college basketball's regular season, and then the tournament's even more wild. Mm-hmm. But and I'm actually really excited for the tournament this year because I think we're going to see a lot of teams that we've never heard of or yeah. teams that never make the tournament. I think we're going to see a lot more variety this year and i'm actually really pumped for it and this is a tournament too where a dayton can really kind of separate themselves Mm -hmm. because i mean dayton's always consistent in the tournament they always make it to you know the second or third round sure and so i mean they have a pretty solid team right now absolutely but then again it's like them the florida states of the world uh the virginia techs of the world those teams can just kind of come out of nowhere well that was the other question that we actually had in the mailbag and I think it's a question worth considering. Can Dayton get a top four seed this year? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of potential. Um, definitely a top eight seed. There's no question that they can get a top eight seed. Top four, it's going to depend on what happens with teams like Louisville, Florida State, you know, Baylor, obviously, Kansas. But never say never. This, I mean, Dayton's on an eight-game win streak right now, undefeated in the Atlantic 10, 17-2 and two on the year. They look really, really good right now, and they're playing yeah. some really top tier basketball. Um, Ob, Tobin. yeah, they really are. I mean, I'm looking, you know, obviously the A10s, you know, Richmond, mm-hmm. Rhode Island, Rhode Island's always in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Duquesne, VCU, Davidson, a lot of those guys. I, uh, I was thinking, I was looking for Butler. I forgot they left the conference. Yep, Butler uh, left the conference. The East, right? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so it's like, you know, they could very easily because it's not a sludge conference. It's a conference that gets respect in basketball now. Well, and you look at Dayton's two losses. They had kind of an ugly loss versus Colorado. It looks like in some kind of a tournament game. But their one good loss was to Kansas by six. Yeah. That's impressive. I, you know, sure, it's Kansas. You obviously, you want to beat them as a statement win. But... Right now, this Dayton team is averaging 83 points a game. That's for fifth in the nation. Right. That's not bad at all. They're allowing 65 a game, so that's almost a 20-point difference. Sure. Between their scoring and their defense. And, you know, sure, they they play in the A-10. I mean, you just mentioned it. Great basketball conference, very well respected. You know, because you always, you always put, like, the Richmonds and the Rhode Islands in at least the second round. Uh, VCU from a few years ago, they they made a really deep run into the final, or the Elite and, Eight, right? And Butler went to the national championship yeah. in the conference. Like I mean, so, George Mason, another solid team from that conference. Like that, it's a yeah. I remember when George Ma- George Mason had a run. Was that probably ten years ago? Oh, man, that was such a great run. Um, let's look it up that, real quick. God, that has to be ten years ago, at least. Because I was, I graduated high school in eleven. And I think that was my sophomore year, maybe sophomore junior year. Um, they the two thousand and six NCAA tournament. It was their final four appearance. 
Uh-huh. They, you want to hear who they knocked off on the way to that? Sure. George Mason, the basketball team known for its 2006 NCAA Final Four appearance, where they beat North Carolina, Connecticut, Michigan State, and Wichita State. They oh, lost cool. to eventual champion Florida in the Final Four. Wow. Dave Paulson yeah, was, a, was, was the fourth year coach. Ohio State. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That that was a good team. They went fifteen and three in the CAA at the time, the Colonial Athletic Conference. Yeah. Oh, spin zone. Have you seen the new Butler Blue no. dog? Uh huh. Oh my gosh. Okay. They just introduced him. He's the, he's the uh, Butler Blue in training. Oh they introduced gosh. him to the crowd today during the game. That's awesome. I'll send you the uh, the tweet. Okay. Cool. Cool. This is a little puppy. That's awesome. No, I'm excited to see it. Um, but I do want to jump back. I know I'm switching gears back to college football for a quick second. But I did want to update people on our tournament, our uh, bracket tournament thing that we did. We have two winners technically. Um, uh, two friends of mine, actually. Graham Giles was the overall first place winner because he ag- he actually had a tie-breaking score for the national championship game. Uh-huh. So. Uh, Graham Giles, and then another friend of mine out of Texas, Ryan Bowers. They both finished uh, with 28 tournament points. So congrats to both of them. We will be sending both of them an Across the Campus t-shirt for their efforts and congratulating them. And I'm excited to do this again for the March Madness. I think we're going to do something really big for that. Um, We'll uh, make sure you guys, as listeners, obviously get the chance to jump in on that, but we're going to do something really cool for that, I think. Yeah. All right. Going back to Butler Blue real quick. Yes. Maybe we're going to do a, we're going to do a podcast here sometime soon. Okay. We're going to do a Mount Rushmore of top living mascots, like real animal mascots. Okay. We'll do a Mount Rushmore of those. Yeah. Let's. Because there's let's so make many cool on ones. Well, yeah. I mean, there's so many good ones. You know, obviously Texas. You got Georgia, but then there's all these other. You know, I mean, you just mentioned it, Butler. Um. And Blue three. Yeah, like there's just so many great mascots out there. Yeah. Um, I would love to do non I'd love to do a a bracket of non animal mascots. Mm-hmm. Like we just do like a Twitter poll bracket. Sure. Um where we could get, you know then we then we obviously we get the you know, obviously we avoid the bulldogs, but you know, we get in like Saint John's Red Storm. Or, you know, I'm just looking at the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks, you know, the Idaho Vandals, things like that. I think that'd be really cool. The Presbyterian Blue Hose. That's a real thing, apparently. Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah. I've never heard of such a thing. All right. So I know we're we're kind of coming down to the end of the show here. This week is uh, we have our new segment of our Mac Trivia. Yeah. AJ, it is your turn to answer. All right. Let's do it. All right. So. There have been three Mid-American Conference football teams that have had 10 or more conference championships ten or more, and 10 or more bowl appearances, so they've done both. One of those teams has a losing bowl record, and that's Bowling Green State University. The other two have a winning bowl record. Who are those two teams? Uh, 10. Say so Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois and Western Michigan. Are those your final answers? Yeah. Both would be incorrect. Okay. We have Miami of Ohio with 15 conference championships, and we have the University of Toledo with 10 conference championships. Oh, Toledo wow. has been to 15 bowl games, and they are 10-5. and five. And then let me pull up the Miami one because it just disappeared on me. And Miami has been to, well, now it just is, that's not fun. All right, uh, MAC titles, yes. So Miami, sorry, Miami has been to 10 bowls, 7 and 3. Bowling Green has been to 13 bowls, 5 and 8. Toledo, 15 bowls, 10 and 5. Miami with 15 MAC titles, Bowling Green with 12. Toledo with 10. Uh, the two teams you chose, Northern Illinois has been to 11 bowl games, four and seven with five MAC championships and Western Michigan, seven bowl games, one and six with three MAC titles. 
I guess for some reason I thought Western had more. It seems like they 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 should anyway. Yeah, no, it always. I mean, they they're always completely competitive, super tough. They mm-hmm. always look like they do belong in a few more conference championships and whatnot. Right. But those are your three Mid American Conference leaders in terms of bowl game appearances and conference championships. All righty then. Good to know. So uh, that's this week's Mac trivia for you guys. Um, AJ, I think that's going to do it for us. I do actually want to propose something to you. A buddy of mine wants to do a podcast of the top plays from the last decade. I know we're a little behind on that. Yeah. But he wants to come on and kind of debate some of those plays with us, and I think I'd like to have him on. So. Sure, we can figure that out. Cool. So, all right, guys, I think, like I said, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do want to throw out, you know, thank you to um, atbsports.net for having us do this thing. If you guys want to check them out, you can follow them on Twitter, at atbsportsnet. If you want to check out their podcast, they kind of cover a bunch of things. It's at atbsportspod. Fantasy football advice, we've got the Beard Brothers Fantasy Football Podcast. Those guys are great. They're already talking stuff for next year, predictions for next year. They're going to be doing a mock draft here soon for those who are doing dynasties or keeper leagues, things like that. you want to check them out. we got Across the Cavs, Across the Jags. We've got uh, The Kennel, which is a Browns podcast for any Browns followers out there. Um, i trying to think what else. I think we're going to be starting up a Cowboys one soon, a hockey yeah. one soon, and a NASCAR podcast soon. So be sure to check those out for sure if, uh, okay. if you guys get that opportunity. But thank you so much for tuning in. AJ, as always, thank you so much for stopping in. And it's a pleasure. We will see you guys next week. Have a good week. See you.